Now this is a tie-in with my previous video in regards to Lucifer and the Freemason Temple legend. I'll link in the description. In all honesty, it may take a few videos to lay this all out. Now if Cain was said to be illuminated with the light of Lucifer, which we know is actually darkness, or I should say confusion, and he walked away from his worship of the Most High, what was the fate of his race to be? Now Cain made his home in the land of Nod, and since he was cursed now, and to no longer toil over the soil, he went on to build a city, and he named the city Enoch, for that was also the name of his firstborn. Forgive me for my pronunciation here, but in Genesis 4, 18 to 24, And unto Enoch was born Irad, and Irad begat Mahujal, and Mahujal begat Methusael, and Methusael begat Lamech. And Lamech took unto him two wives. The name of one was Ada, and the name of the other Zillah. And Ada bare Jub Jabal. He was the father of Sech, as dwell in tents, and of Sech as have cattle. And his brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all Sech as handle, the harp, and organ. And Zillah, she also bare Tubal Cain, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain was Nama. And Lamech said unto his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice. Ye wise of Lamech, hearken unto my speech, for I have slain a man to my wounding, and a young man to my hurt. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech, seventy and sevenfold. The Secret Societies of All Ages and Countries, Volume 2, by Charles William Heckethor, tells us a bit more in detail the time of Haram while in the fires of the earth. It may help us get a better understanding of their mindset. And as the legend says, Haram asks who he is speaking to in the fire of the earth. I am the father of thy fathers. I am the son of Lamech. I am Tubal Cain. Cain, who was there as well, again irradiated with the light of Lucifer, told Haram of the many things he suffered at the will of God. Then Haram heard the voices of Tubal Cain and his sister Nama. A son shall be born unto thee, whom thou shalt indeed not see, but whose numerous descendants shall perpetuate thy race, which superior to that of Adam shall acquire the empire of the world. For many centuries they shall consecrate their courage and genius to the service of the ever ungrateful race of Adam. But at last the best shall become the strongest and restore on earth the worship of fire. Thy sons, invincible in thy name, shall destroy the power of kings, the ministers of the Adonis, the Most High, tyranny. Go, my son, the genie of fire are with thee. Tubal Cain gave him his own hammer that he used to wrought many great things and said to him, Thanks to this hammer and the genie of fire, thou shalt speedily accomplish the work left unfinished through man's stupidity and malignity. Now looking back at Genesis 4, 23 and 24, And Lamech said unto his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice. Ye wives of Lamech, hearken unto my speech. For I have slain a man to my wounding and a young man to my hurt. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech, seventy and sevenfold. Firstly, Lamech admits to his wives how he killed two people, as well as being seemingly proud of it, because he gloats how Cain would be avenged if he was harmed by any man. However, in his ignorance, Lamech was making a ridiculous claim. God told Cain directly that he would be protected most likely as a blessing from the Most High. After all, Cain and his entire bloodline would be cursed to wander in confusion, removed from God. Lamech simply implied the same principle to himself, concocted from his vain imagination. Although he did live to be 777 years old. 
Now concerning Lamech's sons, and Adalbert Jabal, he was the father of such as dwell in tents, and of such as have cattle. And his brother's name was Jubal, he was the father of all such as Handel, the harp and the organ, and Zillah. She also bare Tubal Cain, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain was Nama. Jubal and the power of music is very much relevant, as well as the Iron Kingdom's involvement in it. But I won't be addressing that in this video. Now, taking a look at Tubal Cain, we can indeed see he was a craftsman in metals. In my video, Lucifer, a Kingdom of Iron, I discussed the mineral pyrite. I focused on its cuboid properties, however, Pyrite is also known as one of the oldest rocks used to start fires, or otherwise known as fire stones. When speaking on Lucifer, in Ezekiel 28 and 14, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. The anointed cherub that covereth, who walks up and down in stones of fire. Strong's Concordance, number 666, shows us a covering, or like a bandage, exactly as Ezekiel tells us. And verse 16, by the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore for I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Covering cherub from the stones of fire. The Bible always makes sure to find ways to reiterate its meanings. And speaking on cherubs, Genesis 3 and 24. So he drove up the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims, and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. The cherubs are skilled with wielding fire. However, notice how they were placed at the east of the garden. And remember Cain, Genesis 4 and 16, And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. The east of Eden representing how man will now guard with the flame, but to keep man out of the garden, away from God. The spirit of Cain's iniquity performing a type of spiritual gatekeeping. Cain's offspring were skilled with metals through the use of fire. And the men who follow the path of Tubal Cain to this day not only hinder us in our physical existence, but also blind all men with their spiritual darkness. The fires they burn leave nothing but ash. Throughout time, wrought iron has been used to build ancient structures, warships, and railways. Wrought iron has fought wars, built kingdoms, and provided the structures to everlasting historical landmarks. The term wrought iron comes from the past tense form of the verb to work. At its peak, wrought iron was used in the manufacturing of nearly everything all over the world. In a bloomery, the process involved creating a bed of red-hot charcoal in a furnace to which iron ore mixed with more charcoal was added. Heating and hammering this mass, called the bloom, forces impurities out and mixes the glassy iron silicates into the iron metal to create wrought iron. Jeremiah 10, 14 and 16. 
Every man is brutish in his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image, for his molten image is falsehood, and there is no breath in them. They are vanity, and the work of errors in the time of their visitation they shall perish. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. Seems a familiar pattern appears once again. The sons of Cain can spend a millennia trying to perfect their iron kingdom. However, it's already written in scripture what will become of it. But perhaps we'll touch on that topic another time. God bless.